Hey there. I was out for a walk with my wife, and a uh, lady put these on the curb. And so our my project today is to go in the Wayback Machine. And remember this brand? Panasonic Techniques. Good brand back in the day. But we're going to delve into these and see. Do they work? Are there issues? All right, so I spent a few minutes cleaning this up with some 99% uh, alcohol, and it cleaned up okay. And in the little cleanup, here's some good news. There is a carrier head with a cartridge and a stylus, and everything appears to be intact. That alone is probably worth 50 bucks, so I'm already up about 50 bucks. Um, the up-down arm mechanism does work. And, oh, there's another awesome thing. The motor does work. In the not-so-good category, and I'm not sure if this will be picked up on camera or not, but I'll tell you what it is. When you look at the pitch adjustments, when I dial it in, it won't hold its speed. So either the belt, this is a belt drive, is just a little too loose, and it did feel a little loose when I was on, or I've been reading up, and it turns out that the speed controller contacts can get corroded underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can clean up those contacts, see if that changes things before I go and buy another belt. Um, and if the, the contacts alone don't work. We'll uh, order in a, a new belt and see if that makes a difference. But uh, so far, so good. Okay, for testing purposes, I'm going to put some vinyl on the turntable, but I'm not going to use my best vinyl. Look at this beauty. Ooh. 30 minutes of uninterrupted good music brought to you by Canadian GE. What did that cost back in the day? $1.25. Any road, we'll see what happens. Got it plugged into the tuner. And we'll see if it makes a noise. There we go. We'll switch over to phono. Ooh, there's a bit of hum in that there thing. But there is some music coming out. So, the hum sure doesn't sound good, but uh, it could be that I need to ground the record player. All right, so I figured out their magic code. This is VR, variable resistor, 45, speed, 45 RPM. VR, one, speed, 33. So these are the adjustable um, potentiometers, pots, variable resistors that adjust the fine speed control. And I think what they're saying in the various online forums is that it's the contacts in here that get a bit monkey. monkey. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop this circuit board off, clean it up, with some 99% alcohol. Um, I think that they recommend a deoxidizer spray. I don't have any. And then I'm gonna make sure that all the potentiometers and such for fine speed control, the uh, pitch, are also cleaned up as best I can get them. See what happens. All right, so I've just taken some white lithium grease and using one of these little Q-tip applicators, staying away from electronicals, but going to the mechanicals, down in here, well lubed up, along here, over yonder, up here on the left, and then down here, there's a little mechanism. So just cleaned out all the old gnarly stuff, which looked like that, 
Nice that it was black, easy to find, but freshened it up with some new stuff. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is gonna take, you know, basically sewing machine lube with a fine tip applicator and gonna take the spindle off. And there's a tiny, tiny screw here. And it's got a little bit of lock nut on it. So you'll have to break the little plastic seal. Pop that out. And then what'll happen is you may hear a drop in the box, your spindle falling out. Now don't lose screw. Do recommend you have one of these nice things. And I'll be back to you literally on the flip side. Okay, so this is the spindle. We've removed the little retainer screw on the bottom. It pops straight out. Well, there's the white lithium grease on the gear, which is good. Now, I had already cleaned this up. I'd taken it out already, but I found a bunch of old hard grease caked on down here. That's the recess where the retainer goes. But the recommendation is to take your pin oiler and put a couple of drops on here. This is a fine oil. And then a drop down the shaft as well. And replace that. Give it a spin. And that'll be moving nicely. Also, this is this drive motor. That's the other side. And there's three little rubber washers and this head does float a little bit. So that's okay. But do take some alcohol wipe, clean off that bogey wheel or the, the pulley, clean off your shaft here and uh, you should be good to go. Don't forget to replace that little retainer skirt. And it's probably the hardest part of the whole job is uh, you want to make sure you don't tip the deck upside down again, otherwise you lose your spindle. So just tip it up on its edge and feed that screw back in. And once it's tight, you can put the bottom back on and we'll see how it goes. So just a, a little of my learnings about belts. I didn't know much about belts, but when I opened this up, this is the original belt and note how it's loose on the platen. And when I pulled it over, and yes, this is upside down right now, but I just wanted to show you. When I pulled it over the pulley, it did grab, yeah, but uh, it wasn't so good. I later learned that actually when you put a belt on, this is a new belt, you can barely see it, but you want the belt to fit nice and snug. You actually stretch it a little tiny bit so that it fits around the rim. So on this platter, platen, I'm not sure what you call this thing. I just want to show you there's access ports, but one of the access ports has a little recess. And I have learned that the reason it has that recess is that so you can easily grab your belt, more easily grab your belt without breaking your new belt and you get a finger on it. There we go. And making sure that you don't have a twist, you can relocate. And now we got a belt with some solid tension there. Not so tight that it's messing up your servo, but some decent tension. Okay, hopefully this picks up on camera. But look at the bottom row here. And you'll see that the little white stripes seem to be going off to the left. Now, with a little pitch adjustment, which is right here, we can overcompensate and they start going the other way. See that? Or we can gently dial it in 
until they stop moving. And the way that's working is that's a strobe light, so it's pulsing in time with the little ticks that are going by. And there, they appear to stop. Now, this means that I've got reasonable control over the speed on this guy. And albums will play at the right speed. Before I made those changes, new belt, working on the pots, it was varying wildly. So, there you go, success. And here's the finished product. One nicely dialed in turntable. Panasonic Techniques. And one modernized tuner. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.